A massive thank you to Ricky, Nedj, Syke, Peter and Lee for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. Where today we're here back with episode 50 of our F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Round 8 of season 3 here at the British Grand Prix there. And I yeah, genuinely cannot believe we're already 50 episodes in. It's the start of September. For some reason, the UK has decided to go into a heat wave this week, so content might be a little bit thinner on the ground than I'm sure some of you guys might want as well. But sitting in my room, sweating on F1, uh, when, when yeah, the weather is lovely outside as well, is not something I want to be doing all the time. But to celebrate the 50th episode of our My Team Career Mode, I logged on to F1 tonight to record this video, and it wiped the last three races of this series. Uh, we, it took, I logged in, and it went back to Canada. So love that. So it means, uh, for those of you that watch the Williams Road to Glory as well, I've now lost the Belgian Grand Prix, that point we scored there as well, uh, which is rather infuriating, I can't lie. Um, I simply don't have the time to go back through and do three Grand Prix again, or four if you include that one as well. Uh, so for this series, I've had to simulate through uh, to back to where we are now. I've tried to keep, obviously, everything that I can control uh, exactly the same as we left it there. So obviously we've gone level three on the aero and the fabrication there. Obviously, we've got a lot of upgrades still currently in the works. You can see we're now the second best team in Formula One getting some ultimate upgrades on the car. There. You can see three ultimate upgrades still in the works. Uh, this should be ready for the Hungarian Grand Prix next time out there. But it has meant the championship standings are a little bit different. Ricardo leads the way on 119 points there ahead of Hamilton and Norris still, which is about where it was. Uh, Sonoda's ahead of Charles Leclerc. We're down to 8th, uh, just behind Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen there. Still way ahead of Perez, Russell and Button, of course, separated by just one point there in that battle at Fort P9. Uh, you can see it gave us a 10th place at Canada, which actually was better than we did in the Real Grand Prix, and then two 8th places as well. I think France was... I think both of them were obviously a little bit of an underestimation. Obviously, we did come in clutch there. It gave Hamilton three race victories as well, so clearly the F1 game still loves Hamilton after the carnage of Season 1. Uh, but, yeah, a little bit frustrated with that, but hopefully it doesn't affect too much of the bigger picture stuff in this series. Uh, I'm going to be tweaking the AI more and more as well uh, in the qualifying programs there because it's just ridiculous. You know, trying to run ultimate AI, as you guys now have seen, uh, is impossible in qualifying. So we're going to be tweaking the AI levels a little bit more uh, between qualifying and races there. So a lot going on before this weekend. Let's dive in, finally, to the British Grand Prix. Can't lie, feeling a little bit rusty as we head into the British Grand Prix weekend. It's been a few days since I last logged on to F1 2021. Obviously, we've been doing some more WRC content as well over on my Rally channel. So if you want to go check that out, I would definitely, definitely recommend doing so. Having a lot of fun on WRC 10 so far. Uh, but that was definitely not the line through turn two. Silverstone, though, as always, is a track the AI nice and strong at. Watching the DRS zone. Watch your MFD for the activation point. And of course, it was last season when we had some controversial contact with our teammate Robert Schwartzman there, and an even more controversial crash uh, with Mick Schumacher after some sassy damage. So it was a rough weekend last season, but obviously more and more upgrades on the car. Uh, we have now actually finished all the possible aero upgrades on F1 2021 as well, that we've still got a few chassis and engine, of course, durability as well. But yeah, really do feel like maybe not this season, but yeah, next season definitely, if we're going to be able to ever fight for a title on this game, then has to be it. Down in towards the final couple of corners, though, of this uh, track climatization lap, I'm going to hazard a guess and say it's going to be a green score. Yes. Work. You seem to right, on to uh, the tyre wear simulation run. Fingers crossed this one should be nice and simple as well. But nothing is ever simple on F1 2021 there. It's sliding the rear running through turn 1 and turn 2 a little bit. Puts us straight in the red. Coming towards the end of the lap, though, we're hovering right towards the purple score. We just need to be nice and tidy. There we go. That was a pretty decent couple of corners towards the end of the lap there to launch us into the purple. Don't do anything stupid through the final couple of turns. And this should be a purple score to finish off free practice. There we go. Love to see that. Right, but rather unsurprisingly then for qualifying day here at the British Grand Prix, things have got a little bit wet, unfortunately. So we'll wait and see as to what we can do this weekend in qualifying then. Fingers crossed we can still keep the lap times in a pretty decent territory here. Again, obviously the AI is very, very strong in qualifying trim. I'm running quite a dry orientated setup as well then. Race tomorrow is still meant to be dry as well. That is a snag of the brakes through turn three. Lucky we were able to get that slowed down still between the white lines. Yeah, struggling a bit with the front end. A lot of understeer. 
Bothas sets the first benchmark there on a 36-2, but hopefully we'll see what JV can do as well, of course. Home Grand Prix for the pair of us. Mazepin goes a second faster already down into the 135s, of course, in his Alpine. Big old lift through the old turn one, but we just about keep the wheels inside the white line there. Right, find a couple of corners then. Let's try and get this first lap on the board. I think I've got enough fuel to go for another run if we need to here, but out of the final turn. So the clock slowly tick by as you head through that final kink there, a 35-7. We do go quicker than the Williams, but not quite where I want it to be. I think track's definitely starting to get a little bit quicker, either that or we're finding a bit more confidence in the car. We're already three tenths up, despite the rain still pouring here, but not 100% sure. Actually, I said we got enough fuel for a second run. Not 100% sure that's the case. Half second up, though, as we head in towards Maggots and Beckett. See if we can nail it through here a bit better. Maybe trying to get on the power nice and early. So, so difficult. You really do feel like you're on a knife edge in these full wet conditions there. But through the final corner, down towards the line, it is still half second up. We do have enough fuel to get to the flag. And that is a 35-1. Puts us sixth at the moment. Well, it appears then, here in Q1, it's going to be one of those last car on a run. It's probably going to have a big, big advantage here. We saw Fernando Alonso complete some heroics with this back at the 2017 British Grand Prix there. Of course, put it fastest in Q1. Fingers crossed we can have similar sort of luck today there as you're just going to see a lot of purple times being posted around this lap there. Lando Norris down to the 1 minute 30s. The pace is definitely on the rise as we head out of the first couple of corners here. Already a second up as we head out of Sector 1. So this is certainly reassuring. Seem to be a bit braver on the brakes, carry a bit more speed through the corners. We should just be quicker everywhere. To be honest, 1.3 up now as we try to V-shape Luffield as well. Really trying to get the power nice and early there. You can see a second and a half up already. Let's just hope we don't have the same dramatics as we had at the Belgian Grand Prix and the Williams Road to Glory, where we've got a double puncture because someone binned it in front of us. We went over there front wing. Left in this session and we're in the drop zone. We need a quick lap or that's qualifying over for us. Oh, fingers crossed. This is about to be that quick lap. They're able to maintain so much more momentum through Magnus and Beckett's, but we are down in last place at the moment. So we certainly need the lap now. We're well, 1.3 up on Schwartzman. Surely, as long as we don't do anything stupid, this is going to see us nicely in 2Q2 there. A little bit too much curb on the entry. It's going to cost us a run on the exit there as we get all over the Astro turf. Do get a warning for track limits. But I won't lose any sleep over that if you guys won't. Through the final couple of corners. Three seconds up. So we head out of the final turn there and it is going to be a 131 and that surely is Q2. There we go. Into Q2. They're pretty well next to our teammate at the end of Q1. So I think we've got the AI balance about right then at last this weekend. There's some, uh, Lando Norris though fastest there with both Ferraris just behind him. Uh, and then you can see Joe, Latifi, Hassan Alpha at Q1. No major surprises there. And it seems like this low level sort of rain is meant to stay throughout the rest of Q2. So I'm going to try and go for a bit of a double run on these intermediates there. If we can set a time similar to what we did in Q1, that would be good. Because I don't think too many other people are going to find too much time there. They're able to hold it through turn one in seventh that time round. Just gives you that extra confidence. You know roughly what the car can do from our Q1 run here. And a lot less locking up at the fronts as well. Oh, 1.1 up on Valtteri Bottas as we come in towards Sector 3 here. We've got Mazepin behind us as well. There are things you never expect to say. Well, you always expect to say he's behind you, but not closing in. As we head through the final couple of corners, Alpine do seem to have quite a good little wet package this weekend as well there. But through the final couple of corners, really attack the kerbs through the final proper turn there. Out through the final kink, it is going to be another... Oh, it's a 32-2, 11th at the moment. Mazpin instantly demotes us to 12th. But yeah, we're going to have to go for another run. Again, we're going to try and aim to be the last car out on a run here in Q2. But let's just wait and see. We need about another seven tenths, or I think Button is the man on the drop zone at the moment. So if we find the time, we might upset our teammate here in qualifying for the British Grand Prix. But of course, yeah, we've only got ourselves to worry about at the moment. We might not even be able to get the lap in. So again, through turn one, they're able to carry so much more confidence and momentum. But we've just, yeah, really got to try and keep on, keep on it, keep honest over the course of this lap. No mistakes, no wheel spin, no dramatics. I think it's going to be the aim if we want to try and sneak through into Q3. Oh, a little bit of curb there, but we get away with it. Two tenths up already at Sector 1 is exactly the sort of improvement we need. No one else can start a lap now, so we'll take a lot of curb there. But just keep it a bit tidier through here this time around. I think that's where we're losing a bit of time. See the delta climbs up a little bit there. Three and a half tenths. 
as we got on the power nice and early on the exit as well though. So we did find a little bit more as we head down the old start finish straight here. Back down into old turn one. Definitely more time to be had here. As again, only dropping back down the one gear and that's another tenth as we head in towards sector three here. Oh, it's all getting a little bit twitchy. That's not the line through there, but we're going to be about six cents up as we head out onto the hangar straight here. This is going to be so close between ourselves and Jensen Button at the end of the lap as long as we don't do anything stupid. Break just before the 50 again. I think we've taken a bit too much curb on the way in. So we might compromise our run on the exit there, but we do keep it clean and tidy. Six and a half cents up. Are we going to be able to find any more? Could this be a dramatic end to Q2 here? For the British Grand Prix at the final corner. Eight tenths up. Is it going to be enough? Ninth. Oh, it feels so good when we've actually found an AI level that we can really sort of battle quite well with on F1 2021. Now, I know some of you guys weren't a fan with the idea of having to sort of lower it for qualifying and then up it again for the races. But, I mean, if it gives us some more dramatic scenes like that, personally, I'm all for it. And hopefully you guys can understand from an entertainment perspective as well. So, back into Q3, I think, for only the second time this year. I remember Baku we made it through. But apart from that, I can't really think of any other occasion so far this championship. Ahead of our teammate Jensen Button, let's see how high at the grid we can put it. Well, the sun has finally started shining here at the end of qualifying for the British Grand Prix. It's going to be a one-shot run as the rain has only just stopped. You can see Gasly sets fastest lap at the moment there. Charles Leclerc goes even faster as we tip the car through turn one. Fingers crossed here we can really now see what we can do. I think the track is basically all but dried out there, so I don't think we're going to gain any advantage by going out so late as Lando Norris already down into the mid-22s. Carlos Sainz almost down into the 121s at this stage of qualifying there. Hamilton goes a couple of hundreds faster as well, but this is insane. 122 around the British Grand Prix circuit is an absolutely ridiculous lap there. What are we going to be able to do, though? As again, we get a nice run out of Luffield there, down in towards the old turn one. Not too confident we're going to be able to put it much higher than sort of ninth or 10th here at the end of qualifying. But any improvement would be greatly, greatly appreciated there. You can see Gasly was on the 123. He's already down to 8th by being the first man on the run there. But I just don't think that Alpha Tauri is particularly competitive as well. They're obviously Grand New Zhou and Q1 there, rather unsurprisingly, once more here. But we're currently pretty much on pace with Sonoda as we head down in through the final sector of the lap there. That's very, very wide. On the way in, though, we've got yellow flags out. I think that's just Gasly peeling it back into the pit lane. I'm not going to worry about that all too much. Through the final chicane we go, though. Where are we going to put it on the grid? Ready for a home Grand Prix? It's going to be a 123 there, and it is only ninth. That Ferrari is now well and truly a very, very fast race car at this stage of the year. There, Carlos Sainz just three hundredths of a second off Lewis Hamilton, who takes a yet another pole position here at the British Grand Prix there. But McLaren's lockout row two ahead of Leclerc and Sonoda. We should be on race pace with the Red Bulls as well. Obviously, if we can hang on to them early on, I'll be pretty happy with that. But yeah, let's dive in to the British Grand Prix. Welcome along then to Great Britain and the great Silverstone circuit for today's Grand Prix. Straddling the border of Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire, the 18 corners of the Silverstone circuit form the 3.6 mile beating heart of Formula One. It's been reinvented over the years, with Turn One now the fast right-hander of Abbey, but the magic of racing is as strong here as it's ever been. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start. And this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Ricardo, Charles Leclerc and Sonoda, Perez, Verstappen, Mr. Monaco and Pierre Gasly, Button, Ocon, 
Nikita Mazepin and Russell, Stroll, Bottas, and Guan Yu Zhou and Nicholas Latifi, Schwartzman, Jovanadze, Lundgaard, and Mick Schumacher. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? OK, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Right, well, here we are then. Ready on the grid for the British Grand Prix. Round 8 of the year. And that appears to be a wet, a dry to wet Grand Prix. This is about to get spicy, I feel, here at the Silverstone Circuit. I was right last weekend about Austria. Obviously, I said there, I reckon we could have done quite well. Game... Now says we came 8th, but we really came 4th on that one, but besides the point. Uh, but yeah, this one is going to be very, very interesting then. So the game obviously reckons it is going to need probably full wet tyres towards the end of the race as well. So trying to get these softs all the way to the wet period. Generally, what I've noticed is the rain arrives earlier than the game predicts it to, and it also goes away earlier than it predicts it to as well. There. So fingers crossed this won't screw us. Otherwise, Button, for example, behind, if he's on mediums that can get there and we can't, he could leapfrog his way up right into the lead of the Grand Prix here. But let's let's not worry about that just yet. Let's dive in to the British Grand Prix here from Silverstone. Episode 50 of the My Team Road to Glory. It's five red lights. And it is lights out. And away we go. And that is not an episode 50 worthy start as we head down towards someone there. All the way straight down into 12th place. There's in three spots to our teammate Ocon. And Pierre Gasly off the start there. Mazepin almost runs into the back of me as well as Button tries to have a look past Ocon. I wanted to do the same there, but nowhere to go. And definitely don't want contact with our teammate at the start of the Grand Prix there. But a good little move from defensive driving there from our teammate. As we really don't want to be battling Alpine this weekend. I can't lie to you guys as well. They've been struggling to position the car at the start of this race. I've like said all throughout qualifying we struggled with the front end, but... We have kept it clean and tidy off the start there. It does look like Carlos Sainz has got the jump on Hamilton as well at the front of the field there. So that was actually critical for the Spaniard who, of course, won a couple of races at the back end of Season 1. But Ferrari just not had the good car since then. Maspin, though, tries to get past us as we head in towards Maggots and Beckett. But no, not, not happening, mate. Our button's got a huge run down around the outside of, I think that is, Max Verstappen in this Grand Prix there. Gasly's got past him as well. So Verstappen going backwards... At the start of this race, I wonder if he's got some sort of mechanical issue in that Red Bull. Because he just lost two places down the hangar straight there. But, I mean, it's brought us a bit closer to this group again. Well, I thought it was ridiculous that we were setting 122s in qualifying. Almost 121s. But the AI... ...is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Top AI straight down into the low 23s in race room. Quicker than we managed to go in qualifying. It, these cars are stupid fast. We better get some rule changes for season four. Rain is forecast in just over ten minutes' time. Rain in ten minutes. So rain there, reckon about seven laps away, which would be right about the end of our soft stint. So we might have to nurse these tyres a little bit to open up the wet period. Be pushing hard early on in this Grand Prix, but struggling to keep up with the guys in front. Wonder if they're planning on pitting before the pit window, uh, before the wet rain, the wet rain. Rather than the dry rain map. But yeah, just, just struggling a bit to keep up early on. But then again, we don't have DRS, so we're losing a bit of time down the straights anyway. We are really losing so much time to the guys in front early on in this Grand Prix. They're on a bit worried. Actually, the front right's blistering. There seems to be some old smudges on it as well. But yeah, we're under a lot of pressure from Sir Lancelot just behind us. And we're pretty much losing all the time through Sector 2 there. A stroll actually gives us a bit of a bump and run. He's going to force that over the kerbs on the exit of the loop. But we do hang on in front of him for now. But yeah, Lance Stroll clearly getting rather feisty early on in this race as we're just losing time. Hand over fist. Seconds. We're I'm taking so much out the fronts anyway, just trying to get the car to work. But yeah, the, the OP did downforce. Oh, I'm blaming it on everything now, just so you guys are aware. But yeah, mighty strong so far in this Grand Prix. There is right. Watch this. Ready? Through all turn one. Pretty much on the limit. Stroll's done that on us as we head in towards the next corner here. Just about trying to hang it around the outside there. But look at that! I mean, look. Bottas has even got a run on us as well. It's ridiculous. What am I meant to do at this stage of the game when the AI can just do that around the outside? 
in a worse car. I hasten to add. He's got a much worse car than us. We have got every aero upgrade as well now on this thing. I think we're running five, seven wings, so nothing ridiculously low like that either. But it's genuinely making the game become unplayable at this stage. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. And the rains get further away. It, it all just happens. And because obviously I'm running all this downforce to try and match the AI through the corners, down the straights, I can't even get close enough to try and retake Stroll at the moment. See if we can get a good run on him out of Luffield, but probably not going to happen. Because again, the AI just got the power so early, and there's nothing you can do. We might be able to get a run on him though. So we head back up towards the old turbo and a Hamilton Verstappen though, no, definitely not. And then we'll watch him pull away. Bye! I've just noticed the game has taken us so far back as well. We've actually got a red dot again. That's just how far back it's pushed us. See, when it lost all that data. But yeah, we're back to a red dot apparently this weekend. I have to stay in the DRS to land stroll as well here. We're not losing too much time to the Canadian with DRS there. But if we fall out of the zone, as that's just a load of understeer for no apparent reason. Yeah, if we fall out of the zone, we are screwed. To be honest, I think we're going to box it in at the end of this lap here. Go on to a fresh set of softs. And then really just pray the wet period stays till about lap 18. It's a bit of a gamble, but hopefully, yeah, we'll be able to get an undercut on some of these guys. Just don't feel like we're going to be able to stay out long enough until the wets. But, again, if it just doesn't get wet enough during this Grand Prix, then we're pretty screwed as well there. I think already we've seen Mazepin and Russell into the pits as well in this Grand Prix. There's all the back markers are going to fly past us. So yeah, Mazepin and Russell on a set of hards trying to go deep to get themselves back in contention here. But you can see the McLarens, the Ferraris... And the Mercedes battling out the front of the field there. I think our teammate is still nestled in with the Red Bulls. That's a decent stop. Doesn't really help a lot in this Grand Prix because all the time we've gained there we'll lose through one corner. But yeah, as we head back out into lap 10, we should still be in some clear air. Let's get our head down. Try not to worry. One more stop today. One stop left in our strategy. Okay, we don't think we're far away from some rain. I'll keep you updated as the conditions change what I like to hear, but we've got to pray the AI pit as well before, and otherwise we're basically out of this. There we go. Jensen Button into the pits. In That's what we like to see. So, fingers crossed, we brought ourselves back to Lance Stroll again. The sky's definitely getting a bit greyer, so I'm surprised no one really in this race looked like they opted for a set of mediums off the start. Very, very weird, but yeah, fingers crossed we should be back up to where we were. And as we head back out in towards turn one, there is Lance Stroll. So we have brought ourselves back to contention here, and they're all on the medium. So whether they just don't believe the rain's going to arrive or what, I'm not too sure, but not really sure whether we should go for anything on Sir Lance. So whether we now reckon we can close up the gap to Gasly on some quicker rubber. We'll have a look. Always going to try and take an opportunity if one opens up here as Lance Stroll goes a bit defensive. We got yellow flags out for just a moment. So I wasn't sure we could go for anything, as that's one of the Alfa Romeos. Are they out? No, I think they just span. Riding on board then with Giovinazzi, just loops it round on throttle. Yeah, just just donuts from Gio, because why not, I suppose. Low more cars into the pits at the end of lap 12 as well here. As all, we're still fighting the back end of this thing, apparently. So you try and keep it in one direction, going out of the final corner. Brand new Joe's come out just behind us as well, so we are back up to 13th, but we can't already be losing the DRS to Stroll again. That was the whole reason I pit when I did. Gap's still about 8 tenths. Did I see rain? I think there's just a few spots, perhaps I'm imagining Check things. Your MFD for a new strategy option. One of the team reckon. They're saying Copy. some mediums on lap 17. I reckon there's rain starting to form here. That's why the team are panicking. Yep, there is definitely some rain in the air here at Silverstone. So we head over the halfway stage now on to lap 14. It's going to be a very, very difficult few laps though as we still try and push to keep with Stroll as we have lost the DRS again, despite being on softer, quicker rubber. Okay, be careful on those slicks. These conditions are making the line a bit greasy, but we're still nowhere near the changeover point. So I've seen that. Just confirming what I thought. Nowhere near the changeover point yet, but we have got to be careful. Such a high-speed circuit here at Silverstone, you could find yourself flung off through one small mistake. No team yet saying this rain's definitely going to get worse till the race ends. Just a case of when it'll get wet enough to go into the Inters is again... Now we're on the softer rubber. It's starting to come into its own a bit more. We're closing back in on Lance Stroll slightly. Just because he can't maintain as much temperature. Ooh, that was close. 
big tank slapper as we head out of old turn one. But we hold it in the right direction. Oh, Stroll! Stroll's gone ringed! Oh! The underbody's taken a little damage. Watch out for it. We've been informed of an incident which has resulted in lots of loose debris on the track. The safety car is being deployed. Oh my god. Stroll bins it. Is available on the MFD. And we are just left with nowhere to go as we get a wobble from the car as well there. We've now got a five second penalty, which fingers crossed we should be able to serve under the safety car. But what has happened here at the British Grand Prix? We've got underbody damage as well. That is going to be very, very unstable. Now through to the end of the Grand Prix, it's deja vu after last season. We got weird damage then as well. Daniel Ricciardo's out of the Grand Prix. No idea what's happened to him as we're now getting underta overtaken under safety car does just look like Daniel Ricciardo has had an engine failure in this Grand Prix there, so no dramatics there, like he's crashed into the safety car or anything like that. But yeah, we're going to need a whole new front wing, intermediate rubber as well there, so it's kind of not happened at too bad a stage in this race, but we're still going to be right out at the rear of the field there, but how unlucky can we get on F1 2021? The fact that, yeah, like I said, we have that snap of oversteer heading into the corner, but Stroll's already binned it, and we were just left with nowhere to go in that situation. I'm amazed, to be honest, it didn't rip the front wing off our car as well. But we're going to be back out pretty much at the rear of the field here. And, well, Silverstone, the curse continues as we've got a lot of aero damage as well. Surely this thing is going to be an unstable craft. This thing is going to be loose to the end of the Grand Prix. It might just be like last season. Speed. Our delta is too low and we risk a penalty. Slow your pace immediately. I'll see what the car's like, obviously, when the safety car does come in. But it might be a bit like last season. But we'll just have to box so we don't take anyone else out. Right, safety car in at the end then of this lap. Four, five to go here from the British Grand Prix. And it looks like our curse here at Silverstone is set to continue this weekend. What's going on here? Why is Schumacher going so slow again? Come on. Get on with it, mate. May as well sit alongside him. But there we go. Green flag racing. Oh, it's already the back end kicks out. So we will pounce straight away on Mick Schumacher there and DRS straight up into 18. A Schwartzman, even that was, not Mick Schumacher. That's worrying that I'd sat me on him for three laps under a safety car and hadn't noticed that. But oh my lord, the amount of downfalls we've lost. Because of that front wing damage. Uh, because of that underfloor damage, sorry. This thing just not turn anymore. It feels like we're... Wet tyres, dry track. It almost feels like. I can't lie to you guys. But on the one hand, I sort of just want to get to the end of this race. On the other hand, you sort of think... Is it worth just pitting in to save the mileage on the car? No way we're going to be able to score points in this one. And we are under pressure from Robert Schwartzman again. We're just all over the place. Let's have a look how it is through old turn one. Oh, big old lift to come down a couple of gears as well there. And you can see Schwartzman gaining big time on the exit as well. It's not too bad through the higher speed stuff, but especially through the low speed twisty bits. Yeah, this thing is... Ooh. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. I think... I think we know our new strategy. It's all over here at Silverstone. Front wing damage as well because, I mean, I can't really blame Schwartzman for that. There was nowhere really for him to go at this stage of the day there. But it's not a huge amount of front wing damage. Schwartzman's had to box it in as well. We might as well bring the car in at the end of lap 22 here. It's not the way I wanted to finish the British Grand Prix. But for the second season in a row. It, I don't know why it's only this track we seem to get that damage as well there. But... Oh, it's just gutting. Let's see what effect this result has had on the driver's standings. After an incredible performance, Lewis Hamilton secures the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Now, let's discuss, Ant. Who would you say is a contender for Driver of the Day? One new Joe gets my vote today. Let's move on to the constructors. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Meanwhile, Alpine move up the table with another strong performance this weekend. 
I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the British Grand Prix there. And Lando Norris takes home the dub after coming, I think it was P3 last season when we had that British 1-2-3 here. George Russell, unfortunately, yeah, not able to replicate the solid weekend he had. It is Lando Norris who takes home the win here at Silverstone. Ahead of Hamilton and Yuki Sonoda there. Sonoda back on the podium for the first time in a long old while there. Charles Leclerc fourth ahead of Carlos Sainz with Perez, Button, Ocon, Verstappen and Gasly rounding out your top 10 there. You can see the rest of your finishes there. Guan Yu Zhou, driver of the day, 17th to 11th. Isn't that brilliant a result, I suppose? But it's a better result than he's had throughout most of the year so far there. Myself, Ricardo and Stroll all not making it through to the end. Robert Schwartzman on a four-stop strategy clearly didn't quite pay off for him as well. But Hamilton reclaims the lead at the top of the World Championship there. I completely forgot Ricardo was leading heading into this. So dramatic scenes there for poor Daniel Ricardo, who gets relegated all the way down into third place there. Sonoda back up to fourth as well, fighting roughly where he should be. Uh, Sainz and Verstappen pulling away from us with Perez now still in ninth place there. Button jumps Russell into a little bit of safety as well further back there and you can see a load of back markers uh, with very very few points on the board there. Gasly I think is that his first point of the year? I think that might be for Pierre Gasly. Uh, no his second point to finish sorry of the year though. I thought he had scored uh, up until now there. Constructors wise though Alpine jump, Williams has jump, Alfa Romeo on count back as well after that crazy race there. Mercedes and McLaren just 28 points separate them at the top of the standings as well there but yeah gutted Gutted once again. It's been a tough couple of weeks on F1 2021, I'll be honest with you guys as well. I think as we head in towards the winter, we're going to look at a few different things I want to do on the game as well. That sort of broaden our horizons as well, obviously, until the performance patch does come in. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon, ready for the Hungarian Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss it. A massive thank you for the continued support from all our channel members. If you want to be featured in these end clips, make sure you click the join button down below. But yeah, once again, a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, F. Stathios, Kato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, and Mighty Spork for becoming channel members. The support is really, really appreciated.